Hello, I'm Dr. Gordon Pedersen. It's important to talk about viruses right now because they're very contagious and they can have negative impacts on our health, on our economy, on our social life. Let's take a look at viruses. This is what they look like. Genetic material, meaning RNA or DNA, is contained in this capsid. Once this virus, with its claws or with its landing pad, attaches to the surface of a cell, it injects this genetic material into the cell. When it does so, the cell will not function normally because the genetic material combines with the DNA and RNA of the healthy cell causing it to be abnormal. Abnormal growth can occur. Abnormal function can occur. You know what, that's why you feel so terrible when you get the flu, which is a virus, or any of the other flu, uh, 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 viruses that are out there. Here's another virus. You know, it, it, I've got a model of it right here, and it's just a hose, I know, but you know what? When you talk about this being able to attach to a healthy cell, because the end, has a very specific locking mechanism, then you have something that you can talk about in imagery. So here's the actual picture. We've taken the end of that basic virus and we're going to show you how inside this virus there is what I have depicted here as RNA or genetic material. It could also be DNA particles, but they're incomplete. This virus is not alive, nor is it dead, but it contains segments, parts of a normal DNA, and now injecting it into a healthy cell makes that cell abnormal. So let's take a look at how that works. I have a cell right here, and on the surface of this cell are things called glycoproteins that make shapes. In other words, these are the lock and this is the key. And if this specific form and function doesn't lock on in the right place, it can't actually stay there. It won't fit into the cell, meaning the cell is a semi-permeable membrane. It allows nutrients in. It actively transports minerals and vitamins, hormones, and whatever the cell needs. But it keeps out anything else. But if a virus lands in those receptor sites and is able to inject that genetic material down into the cell, now you've got an abnormally functioning cell. Let's take a look inside what that means. When we open it up and we take out the DNA from the cell, let's take a look at what the DNA is going through. I now have imagery of the DNA and RNA. It's a double-stranded particular product, so you've got this component with all this genetic material, all of this imprinted on there. And when the cell goes to divide, like it does every 20 minutes, it goes through a reader. Now, the reader is called transcription. We're transcribing all that DNA material. And imagine if this were a credit card, and this were the scanner of the credit card, how it reads all the material. Now look, that RNA that was injected from the virus has attached itself onto the normal DNA, and now you've got a tail of abnormal functioning DNA. It reads it all the way through, and guess what happens? Now your DNA is permanently replicating abnormally. Duplicating a viral abnormality could result in a disease like the herpes virus, like the AIDS virus, like in this picture you've got the Ebola virus, and the cell won't function normally anymore. But, but if you take a virus like this, and this is another model that I have, and it kind of looks like the model I have up here like this. And what you've got is you've got a model that's going to attach itself to a healthy cell, but it can only do so if this specific design fits into the specific receptor sites on the cell. Now, what that means is we can actually take this virus and how it floats along and if we block it from attaching to a healthy cell, 
We've totally inhibited all the rest of the viral problem. We've prevented the disease totally and completely. So how do we do that? Well, we have to have a molecule that fits right here. These glycoproteins, or this lock and key mechanism, has a specific shape. So this is the key, and you can take these tiny molecules, nanoparticles, and they can actually fit right into that specific lock and key mechanism. Now, the virus can't inject any genetic material into the cell, and it can't even attach to a healthy cell, so you've inactivated the virus, and all of the viral activity is irrelevant, because the immune system sends macrophages to consume it, totally engulf it, and eliminate it from the body. This also comes in tiny particle form called silver nanoparticles, and you can drink them, or you can put gel in your body, or you can inhale them even, and once they get into your bloodstream, they're going to go right into this selective space, and just like a lock and key, you're going to shut off or prevent this mechanism from happening. Now, I've published a paper on the prevention of influenza, and what happens is that very thing. If this is the influenza virus, silver is consumed twice daily, the nanoparticles get into the bloodstream, fit right into that mechanism, blocking it, and now you have the ability to prevent a viral infection. This is significant because, take a look at some of these viruses. Here's the influenza virus. Here is what happens when a virus damages the DNA, and that DNA now no longer replicates normally. In this case, the Ebola virus damaged the inner linings of the capillaries, or your blood vessels. They replicated abnormally, and they actually just kind of dissolved and let the blood flow out. So you get all these blood blisters all over your body, but you also get them in your brain and in your vital organs. Imagine this going on in your kidneys and your liver and your heart, your brain, all these different things all at the same time, simply because you had a virus inject abnormal RNA into the normal cell, it replicated abnormally. Imagine this. If you took a, a credit card and you ran it through a scanner, so you just stroke it on one of those machines that reads how much digital information is on there, and imagine if somebody had hacked into and put nonsense information on your credit card. Every time you swiped it, $10,000 would go to the bank or $10,000 would go to the store. That's what's happening here with viruses. They go into the cell and they cause absolute nonsense in duplication and you produce 10,000 more viruses that bud off or rupture out and scatter through your body and they do the same thing to more and more and more cells. So absolutely you can destroy tissue even to the point where death from viral attack can occur because your cells are dividing abnormally. With that in mind, let's take a look at this one last time. If I was to take this virus and I wanted to get rid of it completely and totally forever, we have to use the immune system. The thing people realize now is that even when you get a vaccination, it relies on your immune system to build up a response to protect you and have memory against this shape so that you won't have any binding of the virus to healthy cells, so you won't have any viral infections. Now, macrophages, one at a time, flock to the virus and cover it and coat it, and then it's eliminated from the body. But I'm suggesting one more thing can be done. Silver nanoparticles. Drink them twice a day. They come in and they plug this particular lock and key mechanism. They coat the surface in a way that this cannot bind to any healthy cells anymore. And <clears throat> when you add to it the macrophages from the immune system, you get total coverage of the virus and now this virus is no longer active and it will be gone out of your system tomorrow. So my recommendation, drink two teaspoons twice a day of silver nanoparticles and help your immune system prevent viral infections.